I will be giving a talk on how exactly to integrate uh, Algolia search with your documentation websites. So uh, before I'll just say anything, I'll just give a small introduction. Um, my name is Anshul Sani. I'm right now working at Razorpay as a front-end engineer. And my current project on Razorpay is razorpay.com slash docs, which is the website uh, having all the content related to documentation, related to product, APIs or SDK and everything. And there we are almost having our, almost around 1600 to 1800 uh, pages running at a time. And yeah. So, okay, few months back, the Razorpay doc search was horrible. I'll just show you a few examples of few screenshots from uh, what exactly our customers were experiencing. Um, so if you, sorry. So if you see some example, um, the user here is trying to search API and our awesome search is showing them UPI apps, a uh, few more. And my, uh, you can see that there is none of the results are mentioning API. It's just considering API is some, somehow equal to UPI. Then when a user is trying to search Node.js integration, uh, the first result is CS card plugin. I do not know how it reaches there. Uh, probably the second link, it mentions Node.js. And if you are writing Node.js, it will show you no results. So for them, it does not exist. And another one, if someone is trying to search for phone pay integration through Razorpay, um, it's showing tally e-payments and e-invoicing. So it's, it was uh, not working properly. And this was there for quite a lot of time. Um, we were literally sometimes abused by our customers on Twitter for giving them this sort of quality on the docs. So we thought, uh, of course, we had to improve. So earlier we were using um, something called Lunar Search Library, Lunar JS. Um, we were missing, um, like we didn't optimize it. It was our mistake actually. We didn't optimize it for a long time. And then when we finally thought of improving it, we realized that it has not gotten updates since the last two years. So we thought of that we have to discard it. And as you all might have seen in news, uh, Razorpay has got a lot of funding in the last few uh, years. So we thought, why not go for a paid solution? Why instead of going for an open source solution? Because we'll get a lot of support and everything. And we also thought of not maintaining a server. The team was reduced to significantly very less number of engineers. So we thought that why to maintain a server by having a search library running in background. So we thought of going with Algolia. Uh, there were some other uh, advantages also with Algolia. So one of the best thing was the search was customi customizable. Uh, this particular feature is there in all the search libraries, but it is very difficult to fine tune them. And you will run a lot of testing and a lot of uh, improvement performance comparisons to make sure that what actually parameters you should be giving to those libraries that it shows the correct page as the correct position. So in Algolia, the things are much easy. Uh, the parameters are very, uh, you know, it's, it's very flexible and you can, the, the results are shown then and there after you are done with the uh, fine tuning it. So one thing is that. Another thing, easy integration. I was able to really uh, integrate it within just one week. So the documentation and everything is awesome. Integration is very seamless. Another thing, uh, it was performant at scale. It has shown there are industry examples where it has uh, handled millions of records. Uh, many e-commerce websites and other things are using. And for them, the search is far more important than it was for us. So that was the thing. One of the last points, the SDKs were eminent. We we really saw that uh, from front end to back end, you just name the language or name the framework, it will have an SDK for it. And the documentation for that SDK was really uh, best. So these were the few reasons we thought of going with, uh, specifically going with Algolia. Now, the problem which I faced was that the, all, the, all the examples and all the product uh, blogs, whatever there's there, they were mostly for e-commerce use cases or the use cases where the data was very easily available. You will have a database record. You just need to push them to Algolia's uh, index. And then that's it. But for our case, there was a long document which needs to be fitted into uh, their record structure or record size. And there I was facing the issue that there was no correct or straightforward solution given by Algolia for that. Um, 
there was no library and neither there was any blog or anything helping me in that particular scenario so i somehow but when we go back to lunar js that thing was already sorted you just need to provide them the html pages it will automatically somehow create the index uh, so it was built for documentation but elgolia is working for documentation but it is not the product probably i'm, I'm not sure why but uh, they are not giving any examples probably they are not having those use cases many so i had to somehow sort out that how to exactly create the index and make use of that um, in this whole scenario so i got this sort of architecture so there were three things which we needed to do we needed to build index uh, while an update is coming in documentation another thing uploading the index and the third part if any page is getting deleted or if any page is getting renamed we need to delete the record of that particular page so my one of the uh, one of the tools which helped me really was github actions um but those github actions will not do anything automatically we need to provide them the script and this is the architecture which i thought i will do so the first and the most difficult part was the building the index now building index is basically the reason which i am giving this talk if this would have been easier i've i don't think anyone anything would have been there in this talk so what i did i created these steps i hope it is visible yep so these were the steps for building the index uh first and foremost very simple reading all the contact uh, content from the markdown files uh second thing we needed to convert that content into ast so what happens when you are having a very structured data such as uh, which is coming from database you are very specifically knowing that this is the field and this is going to be the order of this particular field in terms of search or the priority of this let's say in a product the product name would be having a higher higher priority than the product category so if if you are searching for a term which is there in the product name and the category both of course the one which is having in the name will have a higher priority in your search results but in case of content you do not have a structured way your headings are there your links are there and we wanted to ha have a use case where our headings are having our headings are having a higher priority over the content and in the headings also our heading 1 is having a higher priority than heading 2 so if someone is searching uh, let's say payments and payments is there in two pages at one in uh, heading 2 and in another one it is acting as, uh, it is a uh, content is there in heading 1 so we would want the page which is having heading 1 as the payment term should come first so using an ast was our compulsion there um kiran yeah uh having an ast was our compulsion there because we needed to make that uh, content as a structured one and i'll show you the code now yeah. so yep this is the point i'll show you the code i'll try to keep this as very simple one so yep um this is the line you can see this is the line you can see uh this is a simple one reading the content and same goes here um uh, it's just reading whatever we uh, we just it, it's just reading the folder of the whole content and it is taking in all the files present there all the markdown files there and post that uh, we needed to convert it into an ast so here i have used a very simple use case uh, where remark is being used in our practical use case we of course are creating with the those markdown files an html file also so the process would be a little longer but here just i wanted to showcase the search use case so i just used remark and converted into ast and not combined the html use case here so remark uh, if you guys would have worked with ast and markdown remark is a plugin and it is part of uh, unified ecosystem uh, unified ecosystem helps us in converting as any con any particular sort of file into asts and remark is one of the plugins which works on markdown so if you folks want to if you are not aware of it uh, please go ahead and search for markdown ast you will co come across this plugin so this what it does it basically converts your content into ast and it also allows you to use your own custom plugin so that you can uh, work on the converted ast and get whatever results you want out of that so i just created one custom plugin 
and this plugin gets the uh, data in the form of a tree and there is a plug there is a utility called visit which is part of again a unified thing it helps us in navigating across those uh, across a tree which is built using a uh, remark plugin so in that you can basically see that as an example what i have shown that if there is an heading uh, push it into a separate so i created a record object it is going to have my uh, each document will be structured into a json object and these will be the fields headings content um path path would be the path of the file and this path generally in case of documentation becomes the link of your documents also and i just created one random rank parameter which is just getting some random number out of 1 and 200 uh, i'll tell the use case of this afterwards and this object id also i'll tell you the use case in a while so i was just start, i started pushing headings separately from the content so if the node type was heading i was pushing it i was separating it out from the content in my object and rest of the other things i was separating it out in the content variable so now i was structuring my content into a separate object which i could provide to algolia as a, as my index so this was the use case of using ast and yep now comes another things so we converted our content into ast and now we have to create a record so you see this i was creating uh, i was filtering heading parts you could filter other things also so in one of our use cases we our product man just came and told us that do not show the results from the code or from the code snippets which are having because most of the time those are not making sense to the users they found out that the users are actually not wanting and also code snippets were having some random data and results so that was one of the use case so you can also start ignoring the content which you do not want to be part of the search and this is one of the examples that code snippets should not be part of the search in some scenarios so we filtered the nodes uh second thing algolia does not have a so each record should be of a particular size and that generally depends on the pricing plan of yours ours was 100 kb we cannot push any content which is more than 100 kb any any record which is more than 100 kb so in case of our we are having pages which are having more than 100 kb of data so we had to split them so a small uh, function i wrote which was just dividing my records into two and it will keep on dividing into two until each and every record becomes um less than 100 kb so most of the size was in my case was coming from the content because that was the heaviest field in our case um uh, in your case it could it could could differ according to the use cases uh it, it it this one is really an optional step only if you are having records which are heavier than the limit you are having or you could pay more and get the most size so yeah so this was just a recurring algorithm which was just keeping on dividing um my records into two third step was to assign object id so object id is something sort of a unique or primary key for algolia for every record in an index uh, it will you have to give a unique id you can also tell algolia to generate uh, the, the unique id automatically but the problem comes uh, when deleting the records because those unique ids either you'll have to store them or you will not know the pattern so we'll never be able to know how to delete those record so sometimes it is uh, a problem because the object id if you need it for deletion uh, in that case you should generate your own so in my case what i was doing i was just taking the file name and generating a hash out of the file name and i know that my pages are can be uniquely identified by the path or the url that's the only unique parameter all the other parameters can be shared among the pages so we were just creating a simple hash to create an object id this was a very simple uh function okay so this is the part uh we created a record now a simple thing each page will be its uh, having its own record so combine all those records into single um array and i was storing it as in json um that is the best way because of course that 
needs to be sent to Algolia also as an inner network call. So that the best way would be to set, store it is in JSON because that's the same format we'll be sending the data to. So if you see, uh, I just, for example, for this talk, what I did, I just copied the whole documentation of Node.js into one folder, um, all these things. And I tried creating an index for them. So when I run this script, I got these things. So this is, uh, you can see, these are the records of each page. So the C++ add-ons page would be having first heading and then second heading. So this, these are the, all the headings of that page. And then all the content is taken as it is. I didn't play with the content here much. I took all whatever is there. So this way I have the index or you can say the records of all the documentation of whatever is there in uh, Node.js docs. Now the second step would be, okay. So we have built an index. Now what this index actually means. So in Algolia, an index is your whole data on which the search operation is going to be performed. And each index is a collection of different records. Now records could be your interpretation. Uh, it could be like in case of, as I said, in e-commerce websites, you have different products. Each product is a record. In our case, each page was a record. In some cases where you need search, which is going into the paragraphs and taking to the right paragraph, you could also consider each paragraph as a separate record. So in that case, each page would be divided into several records. So it all depends on your applications and your use cases that how granular you want your records to be. Now, since we have got our index built, the next step is uploading the index. This one is not a very complex one. Algolia has a very straightforward SDK. You just need to configure the SDK. Uh, upload the records using save objects function and yep, that's it. Handle the success or error. So here, this is the thing. Um, I just read the file, which was having my JSON stored. Uh, you could also prevent storing this JSON just to, uh, prevent the file read and write operation. If you are having some sort of, uh, time latency issues and all those stuff. Uh, since we were doing all this at build time, we were not having those issues. A few seconds would have not made any difference. Now, configuring Algolia uh, SDK and calling this save objects. So there are multiple ways of sending um, the records to Algolia. Uh, Algolia generally recommends, recommends save objects. It's sort of a batch update. Um, and the, op the function itself is doing some optimization in the batch, follow -up, um, batch uh, update part. Uh, if you're sending each object individually, uh, Algolia is not recommending that because uh, it's also not cost effective. And it's also taking a uh, little more time because batch update will send most of the records uh, automatically depending on the size of the HTTP request its server is supporting. Yep, so nothing here much, uploading the index. So now after these two steps, your records are already in the uh, Algolia database. And if you wanna try, so, the best part of Algolia is that uh, for trying out the search, you don't need to really build anything. Uh, they, in their portal itself, give you examples, uh, give you a UI where you can, on your already uploaded index, you can try what exactly is happening uh, and how exactly your results are coming up. So you can see, um, this is the portal. You can see all your records listed here. These are the these uh, so all your records are uploaded here on the uh, portal you can see them and you can try them and i'll show you one thing which i liked about algolia very good so if i'm searching let's say es modules so it is showing me uh, my whole record here and one of the best features is it also shows me why this result is first and not second or why the result is second and not first. Okay, it's a long one. So if you go to this part, you can see it basically has different parameters on which it ranks your content or ranks your results. Um, it was, uh, so it is uh, having those categories. It is stating that the matching words were two. The proximity between those words was one. And the position of the word, the first position of that word was 208 towards. So that is the reason that this result is earlier 
probably and if you go to the second result it will also show the comparison So here you can see that uh, for every result, it is showing that why exactly those results are at that position. Yes, so you can see there's a tiebreaker. So you, you might know that, okay, in particular scenario, both the records are having some sort of similar characteristics, then why exactly one record is above than the other record. So it, it shows the tiebreaker that why exactly and which, ex which attribute actually made that result visible on that particular order. So tiebreaker. So you can try after uploading your records, uh, this part, your integration could be considered complete if your application is not having any removal or any updates on a scalar basis. But in our case, the content is written by a team called content writers. That's a team of 15 people and they're continuously writing. They write a lot. And based on, because of that, we have a lot of pages getting deleted, a lot of pages getting renamed. Uh, every now and then. So we also had to make sure that none of the non-existent pages are coming in our search results. So now this was the trickiest part. Um, since we were not having any server or any backend involved, uh, all we had was the GitHub actions. So we had to somehow figure out the deleted files. Um, so there is an action called TS changed. No, uh, there is an action called changed files. So there's an actual called TJ actions changed files. Um, this is not working very great. It's not as seamless as it could seem in the documentation, at least till the version 25, which I was using. Um, it, if it has got fixed, I, I'm really not sure now. So it can give you all the changed files in whatever manner you want. All the new, newly added files, the deleted ones, or the files which have got renamed, or the file just got updated, everything. Um, so the first step was to get all the deleted files. The second ones get old names of the rename files. The so files will be getting renamed. Now their URL would be changed. Also, now since the files got renamed, the new files got uploaded. So there is a possibility that you might get written and seen that same data because the old file up record is already there. Um, so old names of the renamed files. And yep, just passing them to a script. Um, from those files, you can of course get the URLs of those records. And the best and uh, one of the another good things, Algolia allows you deleting using another unique parameters also. You can delete using any parameter, just acts like some sort of database. Uh, or I sometimes say ES on elastic search on steroids because it's giving a lot of flexibility. So you, I, we were deleting files based on URLs uh, or the records based on URLs because that was the only unique identifier in those uh, in, in that data. And yep, so the last step is setting the preferences. Now, these are the, some of the common or the ones which are the preference or the settings which we used. Um, you can set these parameters for your index, which will help you um, getting uh, the right results. So searchable attributes, your all the attributes need not be searchable. There could be some attributes which are just acting as a metadata. Um, some of them, now, when it comes to retrieving those attributes in your search response, most of the time it has been seen that the content need not be shown in the preview or in the search results. So you can really prevent it coming in your response and just have all the attributes which you really want to show in your search preview or in the search results. You don't need to do that. So you can set up that. Uh, one of the best part, custom ranking. So we somehow wanted uh, our popular pages to appear at a higher level in the search results. So what we thought, we will fetch the Google uh, analytics data of the number of page views and we'll set them there um, as one of the parameters. That parameter will not be a searchable parameter. So you remember in while building index, there was a rank field, which I was assigning a random number. So here I cannot fetch any Google analytics. So I just assign the rank. So in our actual case, we were using a views parameter and we were using it as for custom ranking that for a particular result, if 
the two results are colliding and the cust and the page and the page views of a particular uh, results was more from the google analytics data it should get a higher rank and we did another integration with the google analytics to fetch the page views at the build time but i have not shown that here um, so this was an example of a custom ranking parameter where we do not need to uh, use that for, as a searchable uh, attribute but for ranking our pages so we can use custom ranking through that um, another few things highlighted attributes so when you are getting the search results you can get your term highlighted in the response if you want if you want to switch it off you, it will get switched off now removing stop words we can ignore the helping verbs or the verbs which are not actually relevant is the for uh, our previous library was actually indexing those and sometimes that was causing the problem in the search results another thing attribute for distance so if you remember i told you that sometimes you have to split your records into multiple because of the size uh, which generally happens with the documentations so in that case those results cannot appear twice uh, because they would be having same paths probably same headings so they cannot appear twice so you can mark a distinct parameter according to them so again uh, url was our only helper because that url was combining or linking those two records so in that case if a particular term is appearing in both the records in the response it will come as one now the last step is uh, integrating the ui i really thought that this talk would become much longer if i start showing the demo of the ui integration also i didn't have time in the morning so i just wrote that uh, algolia provides two methods you can either call the api directly from your browser using the public search key um there you have to build your own ui and you will just be calling the search api uh another one would be algolia provides its ui sdks and those ui sdks are having uh a very beautiful or you can say at least manageable search ui uh, with good ux and it is having an inbuilt analytics and other ab testing tools on to that so if you do not have time you can really don't have to build anything for the search everything will come out of sdks now the benefit we got so we were really measuring the number of users or the number of times people are clicking our first result um the number which we got our improvement was from 50.8% to 56.2 percentage and this was after we didn't properly optimized it and we were also doing some sort of ab testing in that period so this 6% improvement was when of i guess 40 to 50% of our users only were using algolia the numbers coming in the future would be much higher probably we would be having 60 to 65% users clicking on the first results that's a parameter we are seeing we are also seeing how much reduction is there in people going beyond third result so that means that they are probably not getting the uh, relevant result that is why they are going going beyond so that is also seeing a significant re reduction now um, and i hope that by now when your numbers comes these numbers will cross 60% yep that's it so uh, sorry one more thing algolia also provides one free uh, integration for uh, normally for open source projects but that is more working on the way of seo uh, factors and that basically take the control out of you and gives the control to uh, algolia where that is generally used by many uh, even by many react document li libraries documentation also but the whole problem is that it is completely based on seo parameters so you do not have the control on which result should come up yep that's it um any questions awesome so yes yeah yes we can do that uh, but in that case you'll have to uh, either pass your analytical events to algolia so for every click you have to tell algolia okay a click has happened on this result uh extra integration or you can use their sdk in ui also which will automatically capture those results so yeah you can configure algolia to use that parameters after a certain amount of time and now recently i saw that algolia has started uh, bringing in some ai optimizations also where as as the users are clicking their results and using the algolia search the results will get much better so it is actually capturing the usage in some manner <laughs>